welcome to another video walk on the wild side this is a special video this one it's a sunday evening and it's a bit wet so what i thought i'd do is i'd take you on a drive through the blackpool illuminations we're starting here at stargate and we're just about to go under the arch there you go welcome to the blackpool illuminations and uh, i'm hoping that it's going to be fairly quiet I think the rain will have probably put quite a few people off coming to Blackpool this evening but it shouldn't do because you know the rain actually helps the illuminations if you ask me because you get those amazing reflections just look at those reflections now so we're starting up where most people do at the south and I'm going to head all the way up to Red Bank Road. So I'll try and talk you along the way. We're just coming up to the Mirror Ball. We're just going past some posh flats called Coastal Point. You might be able to see the Mirror Ball there on the left hand side. There you go, the famous Blackpool Mirror Ball, the largest Mirror Ball in the world. And that's just opposite the Solaris Centre. So we're making our way north through the Blackpool illuminations we've got the Hampton by Hilton on the right hand side the big hotel this is a donation point I'm not going to be donating anything because I pay enough council tax <laughs> but you can if you want and I know a lot of people I've had a few people say what a cheat to ask for donations when the illuminations are not really quite like they used to be you know you can see the pleasure beach there on the right hand side it's all lit up but it will have shut early today because being a sunday they probably shut around about tea time five o'clock something like that that's the boulevard hotel there on the right hand side it's a very very swanky hotel that so we're making our way through the blackpool illuminations we're going past the pleasure beach we're about to go past Watson's Road where the tunnel is this is where the, on the right hand side here There's a car park there on the left there where you can go across the tram tracks so we're now just going past Ocean Boulevard we've got a tram there we're almost at the loop where the the heritage trams and the illuminated trams turn round there on the left hand side that colorful display there is called oh look the Great Western train tram can you see that the Great Western train tram is uh, parked up there just behind Venus Reborn that's um, a video display Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen all these illuminations you see here these like mermaids and that they're all designed by Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen as we go past the White Tower so the Pleasure Beach is all lit up but it's closed on the left hand side that's a sand castle that was built around 19 was it 1986 when the sand castle opened a water park there indoor water park and it's also got the Grosvenor Casino in there that's been a few things it's been the Coronation Street experience it's been the Crystal Maze it's now the Grosvenor Casino very swanky all lit up on the right hand side is the Weatherspoons Velvet Coaster a very very popular pub here in Blackpool we're just about to go past the South Pier as you can see the reflections it's pretty good the rain has actually eased off quite a bit as we head past the south pier over on the right hand side of the road when this car do they know it's on green just over the road is pablo's they've been there a long time pablo's ice cream and fish and chips there's a few people out it's not too bad at the moment the rain has eased off a little bit so it's not it's not too bad but I think that these illuminations along here are quite good. Got some Landau's out. Don't talk to me about pink Landau's. <laughs> We're just going past the top of the coast hotel, the Viking Hotel, sorry, and the Queen's Hotel. Let me know what you think of the illuminations. Are they any good? Or are they pants? 
That's a McDonald's on the right hand side there. I'll tell you what, I don't think they know where they're going. Oh, don't you just hate that? Just pull in, don't bother indicating. That's all right, yeah. We're just going past Waterloo Road. Just down there is Notary Arnie's. The best ice creams in Blackpool. As we continue along the Golden Mile, the Blackpool Illuminations. This is a complete drive-through for those of you that can't make it. Camper van there. You get a few camper vans on the promenade. You can camp along here from, I think it's um, eight o'clock in the evening until eight o'clock in the morning. You can park up along the promenade if you want to if you want to stop over i don't think there's any restrictions on on camper vans on blackpool promenade so we're just now coming up on the big blue hotel there that's the lindine hotel any peter k fans might recognize that because that was the ponderosa phoenix nights and look at that now we're heading straight towards the top oh look at that and it's starting to get a little bit heavy now. I'm coming into a bit of a traffic jam. I was kind of hoping that this wouldn't happen, but it looks like we're coming into a bit of a a bit of a traffic jam here, folks, as we approach Manchester Square. It's going to be a little bit slow as we go through this bit here. Try and keep the windscreen clear for you. There are bits of rain coming down, yeah. Someone's, uh, someone's just chickened out there. I'm going to carry on all the way through. On the right hand side, we've got the Dutchman Hotel. Quite a few people in town this weekend. It was, uh, I think it was, uh, what did they call it? Glas Glasgow weekend, I think. So there are quite a few people in Blackpool. So this is how it looks on a Sunday. On a wet Sunday, I can see the wheel going round on the central pier. I've spoken a few times that um, the central pier and the south pier, they seem to have captured the atmosphere that the Pleasure Beach has lost due to the Pleasure Beach charging people to go in and less people, much less people now, go in the Pleasure Beach. So it seems to have lost quite a lot of its atmosphere that it used to have in the olden day, we might be stuck behind the land down here, you know. I don't know. But we're just coming up on Manchester Square. And I tell you what, it's looking a bit busy. Now, where did all this traffic come from? It's like as if you get to this part of the promenade and it just suddenly... Oh, look at the old tram there. Balloon, what's that one? Balloon seven. Oh, I couldn't quite get the number, hang on. What's the number? I think that was the that, that was the fish and chip tram that me and the map master went on. It is pretty heavy here, the traffic. If you're coming to see the illuminations and you you don't want to get stuck in heavy traffic like this, it would be better to come in the week. Here's me thinking it'd be pretty clear on a Sunday, and I was wrong. A wet Sunday evening in Blackpool through the eliminations and yeah it's like a car park on the promenade. The cheeky of these landows aren't they? Look at that, just got in front of me there. But uh, I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference because oh look at the tower all lit up in red now. The reflections are working. They're working. They're... I can see the big wheel going round on the central pier. You see, that's the thing, you see. The central pier and the south pier. You can just walk on there. You can rock up in Blackpool and you can see the pier and you can think, oh, I want to have a go on that big wheel. I want to have a go on that roller coaster. I want to go on that flying thing that throws you out over the pier. And you can do that without having to pay for it because it's free to walk on the piers. You can also have a go on the stalls. If you don't want to go on anything, well, it doesn't matter because you don't have to pay. But with the Pleasure Beach, you do have to pay. You have to pay 
up to £50 if you're paying on the day. And that's the problem with the Pleasure Beach. And uh, I'm not too sure if Amanda's going to try to change anything, but that's the way it is nowadays. Uh, she seems to know what she's doing, so uh, we'll, we'll leave her to it. We're just coming up to uh, the Fox Hall. Look at these, these are quite fancy, these. They're called Chandelier, the Chandelier Avenue, this bit here, this section. Chandelier, no, Chandelier Causeway, sorry. That's Mar Kelly's on the right hand side. That building, by the way, where Mar Kelly's is, used to be the Foxhall pub, and it was once the site of the oldest sort of substantial building ever built in Blackpool. It was the home of the Tilsley family, and it was called Fox Hall, and that's how the name of this area, that's how it was named, Fox Hall. And that Mark Kelly's there is doing pretty well. They, they do pretty well, Mark Kelly's, you know. Yeah. I can see the new filly down the back there. That's quite a fancy sports and family bar there. We're getting closer to the tower, but it's a slow one. It's a bit of a slow one. Even on a Sunday, Sunday evening, there must be still quite a few people. There's more people here than I thought there would be. But I'll just keep rolling. I'll try not to cut too much unless I get stuck at the traffic lights for for a while. We've got a chippy over there. Food to go, one of the many chippies on the promenade. There's loads of them, isn't there? There's so many places to get fish and chips in Blackpool. Just over here on the right hand side, there used to be, um, the, I remember a strip club, it was called the Time Gap just on the right hand side. Anyone remember that? I'm going back to the 90s. Bit of a naughty, a naughty strip club lap dancing. Loads of places to get something to eat. AJ's Double Burgers, famous Double Burgers. Donut Star, lots of stuff that's not really that good for you. Pat's Tempe Bingo. They're doing pretty well in Pat's Tempe Bingo, you know. Oh, they're pretty full up in there. So we're leaving the big wheel on the central pier behind. Nice colours on the big wheel there. They were supposed to be putting a bigger one on. There was a couple of years ago, there was talk of them putting a, an even bigger big wheel on there. It is now a landmark of Blackpool, the, the central pier big wheel. I don't even remember the central pier when it didn't have a big wheel on it. The tower is changing colour all the time. This is sponsored by Partington's Holiday Parts, this bit here. So we're now just coming up to the front of the central pier there. The tower's getting bigger. Loads of souvenir shops on the right hand side. You know, these takeaways and souvenir shops are doing really, really well. They're doing a good trade tonight. Just on the left hand side there is Odyssey. Can you see Odyssey? I think that these illuminations look pretty good. I think the, the council probably spent more money on this bit than they do on the rest of it, but uh, the reflections just make it even better, don't they? On the right hand side, we've got the, the waxworks, fun land. This is the main drag now in Blackpool. This is where most of the people concentrate here. The sea Life Centre, the Golden Mile, more land else parked up there. Coral Island, on the left hand side you can see the baubles, the light up baubles there, Spyro, just going past Coral Island now, those little, I thought they were going to jump out then so I've got to be careful, I've got to be very careful. Right. 
so we're now going past the Albert and the Lion Weatherspoons, and we're just about to go past the the Blackpool Tower. On the left hand side there's a comedy carpet, you might be able to see the Blackpool sign all lit up there, the light pool display, where it, it's actually going on now. Can you see on the building there where the the playing a the playing something there now on the on the, the tower building, the projection, that's a light pool. So we've just left the tower. We're now heading towards the North Pier. Let me know what you think of the illuminations. I remember when they were all bulbs, and I have to say, I think that the Blackpool illuminations are good in parts, but there are some parts where they look very sparse. But also, there doesn't seem to be that sparkle to the lights. I don't know what you think, but they just don't seem to quite have that, that magic. And, and maybe it's because not quite as many people come to see the illuminations nowadays. It used to be absolutely stuffed all the way from Squiresgate Lane all the way up to um, Red Bank Road. And this used to be a dual carriageway, this bit here. It used to be not, not, I wouldn't say it was a dual carriageway, but it had twin lanes on either side. So it was like a four-lane four lane road at this point here. Yeah, it used to be, so you could get more traffic on it. We're about to go past shenanigans. Oh, shenanigans there in the eights. There you go. It's looking pretty quiet in shenanigans. That's the North Pier there on the left. We're now at Talbot Square, and this is where the illuminations go a little bit... Uh, well, they seem to go out for a bit as we go across Talbot Square. No trams going across here after seven o'clock. They've stopped the trams going to North Station after seven p Someone's just gone up on the curb there. Some car just drove straight up on that curb. <laughs> they mustn't have seen it. We're just going past Queen Square, Queen Street, where all the popular pubs are, walk about. That's the Metropole on the left. Got a tram coming. Remember when you used to duel with the trams coming down here because you didn't have this divided line. You used to have to drive down that left hand side across the tram tracks and you used to have to duel with the tram and sometimes people would actually drive up the tram tracks here and they would get stuck on the tram tracks because when you drive up this way the road used to bend but some people used to carry on driving up that left hand side there you see before they divided it all and then people would be stuck on the tram tracks then wouldn't they <laughs> that used to happen quite a lot so that's probably why they put the divider in. But yeah, a little bit cheap round here, the illuminations. Just, it's basically just a string of lights here, isn't it? All that bit there from Talbot Square. We're now going past Lansdowne Crescent. On the right-hand side, we've got Tiffany's and the Claremont Hotel. That building is Lansdowne Crescent. And it was built around 1875 as a, a large block of, I think it was flats, posh apartments. Got a Best Western Hotel on the right. Yeah, Lansdowne Crescent is one of three crescents on Blackpool Promenade. We're now at a bit of a high point. We're just going past the Imperial. There you go. That's my favourite hotel in Blackpool, the Imperial. It's got to be the, it's got to be the most famous and grandest hotel in Blackpool, the Imperial. Because it's where famous people have stayed there. Charles Dickens, heads of state. Prime Ministers, Margaret Thatcher, Winston Churchill, they've all stayed. Oh, we're just going past the Strand. That's Alan Bradley, where he came out chasing after Rita, and he got run over by a tram just over the road there. That's the Grand Hotel on the right-hand side. Started as the Pembroke, then it became the, was it the Stackis? And then the Hilton. It had a nightclub called Springs. Yeah. Now it's the Grand. We're just going, and next door to that was the Derby Baths, of course. The Derby Baths was demolished before, was it before? I know, it was after they built the uh, Sandcastle, wasn't it? I think when they built the Sandcastle, they then demolished the uh, the Derby Baths. What a shame. I never really got to know the Derby Baths because I was never a swimmer. But it was a beautiful building by all accounts. We're now at Ginn Square. And this is where they have the Spitfires. They always have some display in the roundabout. 
and as you can see they've got spitfires there they've had um, a fairground thing going on there they've had I remember when they had the rocket tram there on display at Ginn Square on the left hand side I don't know if you can see but they've got a park there that's called Jubilee Gardens and they've got their own illuminations in there as well I did a video on that a couple of years ago I think it was um, was it the might have been last year actually when they first installed those illuminations there at uh, Jubilee Gardens just gone past the Savoy Hotel and these illuminations now they look quite fancy I think what do you think again they look like Lawrence Bowen designs on the right hand side is where the new Hackett's Hotel was that was knocked down after the fire that's the Cliffs Hotel that's a large hotel isn't it I like that planetarium thing they've got at the front there So we're moving, we're moving now a little bit. We're, we're not doing too bad. And we've got some quite nice illuminations here as we go past the Royal Boston Hotel. And then the Elgin, that's the Elgin. So we're coming up now on the point where we get the tableaus, just on the right hand side, Uncle Tom's cabin. It's now Mark Kelly's showboat. That's the Doric and the Sheraton Hotel. The Doric, very fancy hotels, I mean, they're really nice, very popular. I see loads of people in there. Oh, they're doing well. That's the Genting Casino there. That used to be called the Castle in the olden days, shaped a bit like a castle. So we're now making our way down the final stretch. We've got the tableau section now on the left hand side. It's kind of interactive, you can walk around it. I did a live stream from there a few weeks ago if you want to check it out. Probably get a better view than you do here. But as you can see the illuminations on the road are basically, we're back to a string of lights again folks. Yeah, we're back to a string of lights because they probably spent all the money on the left hand side doing those tableaus. So they thought, hang on a minute, everyone's going to be looking at the tableaus, so why don't we just put up a string of lights here and save some money instead of trying to make the illuminations fancy over the road when everybody's looking to the left hand side just going past uh, Sooty or Basil Brush and uh, Postman Pat there's a new one there on the left hand side with some quite mean looking eyes and an ice cream van don't know what that's, what that's all about but that replaced that replaced the uh, the Indian display, the Red Indian. Who remembers the Red Indian display? One person moaned about it. And because that one person moaned about the Red Indian display, they, they changed it. We're just going past another donation point as we head past the miners' home, the miners' convalescent home on the right-hand side. I wonder how much they get from the donations. I didn't see anybody stop. But the Haunted Hotel on the left hand side, that's a good one, the Haunted Hotel. Well we're getting close to the end now folks and uh, that was a drive through the Blackpool Illuminations on a wet Sunday. It did get quite heavy along the main drag there the central bit it did get quite heavy but apart from that we've not done too bad and you don't want to go too fast you want to take them in don't you so i think we've done it at a fairly good pace there so we're now coming up on bispam tram station and that's the end of the blackpool illuminations we are now about to go under the archway shouldn't it have the end on there well you can come in it from this way if you want you don't need to you know you can do it the other way around but I'm going to leave it there now folks that was the Blackpool Illuminations I'm just going to nip down here now Red Bank Road now down here we've got some places where you can have something to eat we've got the Bispam kitchen and we've got the top chippy so when you've seen the Illuminations you can get your chips from there that was the Blackpool Illuminations 
we've seen them all. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like the video, hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos. And I'll see you again on the next one.